Okay, Jean-Claude, tell me, what do you do professionally? Professionally, I'm a translation consultant mm -hmm. with the United Bible Societies. Good. Where do you work? I'm based in Nairobi. Okay. And I work for Bible Societies of Congo, Kinshasa, yes. Congo Brazzaville, and Cameroon. So that's a huge yes. part of Central yes. and Western yes. Africa, right? Yes, and partly also for Tanzania. I was also involved in uh, Ethiopia, uh, supervising a new translation consultant. Where are you from originally then? I'm from Congo, from Congo, Kinshasa. Okay. Yeah, which is called the Democratic Republic of Congo. Good. Former Zaire. Right. Do you speak all the languages of that vast region? No, I don't speak all the lang languages, but uh, what happens is that uh, if we have a common language, like French for fr Francophone countries, then when I che I'm checking uh, Lingala, for instance, or a, a Lari language, which mm -hmm. I may not know, then the translator back translate for me. Okay. Then so I understand what they have done from mm -hmm. that back translation. And now from that we can communicate, ask some questions to find out what went wrong or what was correct and so on. So your work as a consultant, mm -hmm. how does that relate to the translators? What's your relationship with the actual translation process? Oh, my work is to control, to check the quality of the translation given the training we have. Mm -hmm. So the quality mainly three criteria faithfulness to the original mm -hmm. source, basically Greek or Hebrew, and then uh, also check the, f the natu naturalness, mm -hmm. whether it is natural in the target language. Even if I don't know that language, then what happens is that I ask questions pertaining to discover whether the translation is natural, whether a common person can understand the translation, and uh, also clarity, whether that translation is clear okay yeah those three things are very important so that the majority of the target people can understand easily what is in the translation the other day you pulled out a whole lot of books that you've written or worked on what general field have you been publishing in there what kind of topics have engaged you uh, okay we have a group called uh, we work through what we call Institute of Scripture Studies as mm -hmm. a group of scholars, mm -hmm. basically for New Testament studies, Old Testament studies, and translation studies. And, yeah. and there, we focus more on intercultural approaches. Okay. Yes, which takes What do you mean by intercultural? Intercultural, I mean, uh, first of all, culture here is taken in holistic sense. Mm -hmm which means that uh, the totality of an experience, g human experience, in a given time and space. Mm -hmm. So, and what allows us to get into that culture is a language, language is mm -hmm. key. So you're uh, talking about a local language here, not, not yes. a big standard, not First, Swahili, it's a local it, language. In, now, it, it, it depends. This community might be a multilingual community. Mm -hmm. you can use French, Lingala, even English. Mm -hmm. So to understand that community, you need to penetrate it through at least through some of those languages. Mm -hmm. Or therefore, that uh, that's why I say that language is very important. Mm -hmm. Then after that, contemporary community also or contemporary culture, you also venture to see what happened before the preceding community, the culture which inherited. Mm -hmm. from which this contemporary culture inherited what is even the text, for instance, okay. of the text of tradition. So as far as the Bible is concerned, for instance, we take the original biblical text and then a church tradition, like, for instance, if you want to understand what the Orthodox, how they understood that particular text, mm -hmm. then you go to the Orthodox tradition or tra Orthodox commentator. Prior to your translation. Exactly, prior okay. to your translation. Yeah. And sometimes things like uh, Valgate, for instance, or yes. Septuagint translation helps to understand how this very Greek word or Hebrew word were understood okay. because the translation can show it. Does that mean you have to respect the previous interpretation? Mm -hmm. Can you change that? At least you take decision taking into account. Yeah. You take a decision knowing what they did. You are okay. free. You are free to diverse, okay. to deviate okay. from, but at least knowing what they have done. Okay.
not by ignorance. You've worked on the concepts of inculturation and interculturation. Yeah. Can you explain briefly what you understand by okay. these terms? Inculturation involves two movements. That is, first of all, the incarnation of the gospel in a given culture, mm -hmm. and also transformation of that culture by the gospel. Okay. But now, the difference between inculturation and interculturation is that inculturation is multiple, mm -hmm. not only two ways. Minimum three cultures mm -hmm. get in that. First of all, as I, I said before, the original culture, the intermediary cultures, and also the contemporary cultures. Can the you give an example of, of that interculturation? Okay, interculturation, I can say for instance, it, any, if I'm doing intercultural st biblical study, for instance, I take, a, let, let's say for instance, a text from Paul, or Romans, mm -hmm. or peace. Uh, like like uh, peace, uh, about peace, yeah. like Romans chapter 14 verse uh, 19, seek, pursue, pursue what makes peace and the immediate edification. So now, in my contemporary culture, for instance, in African Central Africa, for instance, I, what I call there is scholarly, what for instance scholars, biblical scholars current biblical scholars and how they understand it. Mm -hmm. How ordinary people, for instance, they are bishops of Central Africa who launched an appeal for peace using that particular text. Mm -hmm. What did they say about it? Mm -hmm. So that's my co contemporary understanding, horizon. Right. Now, I go to the church fathers tradition, for instance. What did, for instance, St. Augustine mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. when he was commenting, for instance, the, poor, the letter of of Paul to Romans. Yes. I take that into consideration and after that I go to study that uh, particular letter in its own context of first uh, Roman century with Paul's uh, understanding the, the milieu in which he, lay, he lived and so on. Now then I come to see what is the similarity and difference between those three poles of cultural understanding and then from there I can say for me now and for my contemporary culture because what is most important is the live the contemporary culture right. which needs to be transformed and to be transformed you need to take into account what came before and what is present and also what will be in the future so the That's term it. inculturation interculturation for you implies the transformation of contemporary cultures exactly and of the church cultures church culture well. church cultures even a business culture yeah. Yes, because contemporary culture is multidimensional. Mm -hmm. You have business in it, into it, because that's why I say culture is taken in a holistic sense. Mm -hmm. It includes, it's not only just a frame in opposition to, for instance, religious culture or social culture, or, or I mean, in social or spiritual, but it's a totality whereby everything is included. But f of course, when you are doing that study, definitely as a limited human being, you'll go through a particular venue. Okay. It can be through translation, it can be through biblical study, it can be through anthropology, sociology, translation, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. What were you doing when you were 22, 23, 24? Uh, when I was... Uh, you weren't a Bible okay. consultant, were you? I was not. I was a student. Uh -huh. I, was, I remember that I was doing my theology by that time. Where? Where did you in Kinshasa. All right. Catholic uh -huh. University of Kinshasa. Uh -huh. I was doing my theology. I was in You're a Catholic? I'm a Catholic. Good. Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, I was struck by uh, biblical exegesis. Right. We had some professors who were very taught. Others were systematicians very abstract ideas and so on. I also like that kind of ideas. Mm -hmm. Reasoning, capacity of reasoning, mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was more convinced by biblical scholars because their uh, approach was more scientific in the sense that you, can, you could prove, you could have something palpable, tangible, yeah. like in terms of method, you can, you can see the text, that's what you are interpreting. Whereas okay. with uh, the philosophical yeah. ideas, many were just ideas, arguments, but good, but you could not have kind of uh, tangible uh, and uh, objective thing that you can check and so on. Just, just out of curiosity, you were trained in French, I suppose. Yes, it was in okay. French. So French was a vehicular Exactly, language, yes. Knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And briefly, what have you done since then? How did you get to okay. where you Since then, now? when I finished my life, uh, undergraduate and then uh, I, my license degree masters mm -hmm. then I went to do doctoral uh, research mm -hmm. in Belgium 
I really? Think, yes. Where was that? Catholic University of Louvain. Oh, yes. Leuven, we know, we know in Flemish. Well, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Leuven. So then I graduated there in 1996. So you spoke Dutch? Yes, yeah. I spoke Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, after that, I, I came back. I went back to Congo. Mm. When, so I taught for one year in university. Then after that, I was uh, hired by uh, United Societies mm -hmm. until now. Good. Then, Good. But I still teach part-time, like uh, Hekima okay. College, which is a Jesuit school of theology in Nairobi. Okay. I'm very also good. professor extraordinary at the University of Pretoria. Ah, very good. Yeah, so that keeps me doing research Excellent. and so on. And I like Excellent. research. I'm passionate about the research. That's my question. What should we be doing research on, do you think? Um, what would you like to see us doing? That's more the point. I would like to see us very open to leave room for everybody right. to prove himself or herself. <laughs> <laughs> then the schools will be creating them by themselves. For instance, you can have this current of uh, intercultural studies. Mm -hmm. Let them go doing that. If there, are, if there are other people who are interested just in, for instance, sociology of translation, let them go, embrace it, mm -hmm. encourage them to do that. Others in theology of translation, philosophy of translation, methods of translation, like from uh, equivalence theory, uh, relevance theory, and so on. Mm -hmm. So that we, ha we embrace, because you cannot confine people in one given domain. Leave them free, and then they, those schools will be building by themselves and it will be kind of a cross culture, cross uh, um, uh, enrichment. Do, do you think that translation studies is too European focused at the moment? Yes. Maybe the expression European focus, I can nuance it because it has been more developed in Europe. Yes. Yeah, but. Since it is, they take into context into, into their own context, which is normal. Yeah, it's up, it's, it's, it's up for to us, for instance, who are non-European, yes. to bring on board how translation is done in our own context. Yes. So Europe cannot do it for us. <laughs> so we have to do it for ourselves, and they are share with European translation studies and our colleagues and so on. Jean-Claude, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much, you. Professor Pierre.